Hello and welcome to Prescriptive Analytics. We're going to take a problem in capital budgeting, but really what we're going to do in this problem is to discuss how to deal with binary variables. So in the last problem we discussed how we dealt with integer variables. In this problem we're going to talk about binary variables. And then we'll spend some time talking about some of the logical constraints we can use using binary variables. My name is Hari Rajagopalan and I'll be walking you through this lecture. So let's look at binary variables. Binary variables are variables that can assume only zero or one values. Uh, these variables can be useful in a number of practical modeling situations. And we're going to talk about one specific problem here. So we have this company called CRT Technologies and they are evaluating and choosing R&D projects to support. Companies received 18 proposals and identified six of these projects as being consistent with company's mission. The company does not have the funds available to take, undertake all six projects, so they have to select which one. They have $250,000 available to invest in new projects. It has budgeted 75,000 as continued support in year two and 50,000 in year three and four and five. So right at the start, 250,000, and then year two, uh, it, sorry, yeah, you, this, that's right here. Then uh, 75,000 and 50, 50, 50. Unused funds, if you don't use the fund, you lose it. So you use it or lose it. And then you have your projects. Here is your present expected net present value in thousands and here is your cost given to you in thousands of dollars. So we have the costs here given here. So given this is the problem, let's look at the problem. Again, the first thing to look at is what is our objective? Your objective of course here is to maximize your net present value. For those of you who haven't taken finance, net present value is the present value of future money. So the whole idea is that a dollar now in your hand is worth more than a dollar promised a year later because you can actually invest that dollar. Let's say you had $100 right now versus somebody says, I'll give you $100 later. $100 right now is a lot more valuable. And the reason is you could go ahead and invest it in, in a CD for a year and get 1% interest and next year get $101, $101. So the discounted value is your net present value. So it's the present value of future flows. So this is after this project is completed in after end of year five, beginning year six, the present value of that money is this $141,000, right? So we're trying to maximize this net present value. So what is, what are the if you think about this, think about what is the decision you have to take. Now a lot of times students go, well, it's how much of money to invest in um, each project. No, it's not the number of dollars because remember, if you choose project one, you are going to put in 75,000 in year one, 25,000 in year two, 20 in year three, 15 in year four, 10 in year five. It's a given. How much is given? So all we have here is, are you going to choose project one? Yes or no? And when you get to yes or no decisions, you are in the binary decision variable. So a decision variable is xi is equal to one if the project i is selected, zero otherwise. So your objective then is to maximize your net present value, right? And of course, if X1 is one, then you incur 141,000 or 141 in this case. If X1 is zero, 141 multiplied by zero is zero, so it vanishes. So the computer will decide whether to put a one or a zero on each one of these variables. Subject to, and then you have constraints. So let's look at each year now. Year one, year one, if you go back and look at that table, you have, for each project, you have costs for year one. So you have 75x1 plus 90x2 plus 60x3. That's what you're looking at. And that's what you get, 75x1. So you're going to look at the costs. And these costs, remember, you have only $250,000. So it's less than 250. 
Similarly, you got to take all the costs for year two and less than 75, and then year three, four, and five. And then you've got to say XI is binary. And this is your objective. This is your total model. Once you have your model, we can look at how we're going to set it up in Excel. And how you set up is not going to change except for one small thing, and we'll talk about that. All right, so here we have um, the model, and we're setting it up very similar. You know, you have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. You're going to leave this row blank, right? Um, the, these here, where your um, projects, this is your objective coefficient. These are your constraint coefficients some product nothing has changed except an analytic solver once you finish all that you're going to go to constraints you're going to select the decision variables and make sure that they are binary bin right that's selected once you select binary that should be okay and you can run it all right this is the only difference from integer to binary and it'll take care of excel will take care of everything else for you all right, so let's stop here. I'm going back to the PowerPoint presentation and we're going to talk about some logical constraints. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how binary variables can be used as logical constraints. So let's take an example. We're saying of projects one, three, and six, only one, no more than one may be selected, which means you can select project one, three, or six, but not more than one. And you don't have to select all three of them. All three of them could be zero. And the way we are going to do that is x1 plus x3 plus x6 is less than or equal to one. And this makes sense because you can have all three is zeros, which will be less than one. Any one of these can be one, which will be equal to one, but not more than one can be. So this actually creates that constraint. So in this second one, we are saying, exactly one you must select one of these three and only one you can't select two you have to select one so in this case you're going to say equal to one so you can modify this you can kind of assume if this was no more than one if you want to say no more than two is selected you can actually put two or exactly two must be selected you can say equal to two i hope all of you can understand how you're using this binary variable the next one is a little bit more tricky if project one is selected, then project two should be selected. All right. So let's look at how this is handled. I'm going to get my pen and uh, let's see if we can get you to understand how this works. So let's go ahead and put that in. And let's get, let's go ahead and get a pen here. If project two is selected, Project 2, x2, is going to be 1. And, sorry, if project 1 is selected, right, then project 2 uh, should be 1. So let's say x1 is 1, then x2 has to be 1. If x1 is not selected, then project two can be either selected or not selected. It doesn't matter, it could be zero or one, which means that X2 will always be greater than X1, right? So X2 minus X1 is greater than or equal to zero, or X1 minus X2 is less than or equal to zero. So X2 values will either be equal to, or sometimes it can be greater than, but it'll never be less than, um, uh, it can never be less than the value. And that's why you have x2 minus x1 greater than or equal to zero. If project one is not selected, then project two should be selected, right? So let's take a look at this here. So in this particular case, we have x1 and x2 is greater than one, because if Two, if one is zero, two has to be one, right? If one is zero, two has to be one. If one is one, then two can be zero or one. So either way, 
um, it doesn't matter, right? So if this is zero, uh, if x1 is zero, if x1 is zero, then x2 automatically is one. So obviously that'd be greater than or equal to one. If x1 is one, x2 can be one or zero, which means automatically it'd be greater than or equal to one, right? So that's the function there. If project one is selected, project two should not be selected. In this case, if project one is one, x2 has to be zero, right? If x1 is zero, this can be zero or one, which means it'll always be less than or equal to one. Now let's look at this. If one is selected, then two and three should be selected. So in this case, we break it up, we can say, x2 is greater than x1, or x2 minus x1 is greater than zero, very similar to this one, very similar to what we have here, that's this part. And you do the same thing for three. So you have two constraints essentially there. And then finally, we're looking at if project one and two are selected, then project three should be selected. And here we have to kind of uh, use x3 which is project three is greater than or equal to x1 plus x2 minus one. And if you do the same thing, you know, project one, three is selected. So if one and two, this is one and this is one, right? That'll be two minus one. This has to be greater than one. So this will be a one. And then you can put a one, zero, zero, one. This can be either a zero or a one. And you will see that this constraint will work. So what you should do is print this sheet out and use this as an example, you will get questions which use these binary logical constraints. And it's important that you are able to understand how to use them.